Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another The Geek Authority Show. I'm Lorenzo Marchese, your host, and as you know, I like to interview all kinds of people, actors, cosplayers, conventioneers, uh, vendors, people that go all out when it comes to uh, collecting and uh, all kinds of sci-fi, fantasy kinds of uh, things that are out there. Uh, during the pandemic, our conventions have been pretty much shut down. But uh, thanks to things like Zoom and, and uh, the internet, we are still keeping in touch and doing all kinds of fun things. And today, I have a special guest, Andrew Elkins. There you go. Now, here's a little collage. I do have a question. Who's on the bottom left? The bottom left is my young Dumbledore from uh, Fantastic Beasts. Okay, that's young Dumbledore. Yes, so that's, that's when he's a professor um, uh, at the school, but not headmaster yet. So you can look at the dichotomy of the bottom left is uh, is my young Dumbledore and the bottom right is my headmaster Dumbledore. Oh, wow. No, big difference, huh? For, in terms of the costuming uh, and the character. Yeah. And, um, and the, uh, 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 the right middle. I assume that's your daughter. That is my daughter, Elizabeth. Uh, she was doing a Femme 4 at the last Gallifrey, so I did a, a cross-play Sarah John Smith. Okay. Um, so I was her companion. Most of the time um, in the first couple years of, of her life, she has been Sarah Jane to my fourth. So I figured this year I'd switch it up for her. Uh, and did, she, did she have fun? Does she know what's going on? She hasn't gotten into Doctor Who just yet, but she does love getting into the costume and she's a ham. Okay. So she, lo she just loves getting in the, in the costumes. Hey, look, there's my Here's my, my surprise. Trek. Here's yep. my surprise. My Star Trek Doctor Who mashup. This is, this is what would happen if the Doctor got trapped in the Star Trek universe. Of course, he joined Starfleet. And be a science officer. And still use the screwdriver, huh? And yes, he doesn't use weapons. So well, a sonic screwdriver is, is what he would use. But he I can thought see he he's got a quarter and he's got a, a communicator. He's boosting the signal there right now. I, I, I thought he'd like, you know, switch over to a tricorder and, and. No, no, he'd never be free of his sonic. Never. <laughs> okay. And check this out. Oh, yeah. City on the Edge of Forever. Yes, the Guardian of Forever. The time because machine, I don't think you'd like to use often as the fourth doctor. It's cause... not exactly the most, you know, <laughs> exact time machine. But then again, neither is the TARDIS because, you know, still at this time learn how to fly it. So sometimes well, I get where I'm going, sometimes I don't. <laughs> well, according to the doctor, it takes him where he needs to be. That is the truth. So but, you know, when I put the randomizer, you know, as the fourth doctor, when I put the randomizer on the, uh, and the TARDIS, uh, then I went wherever I had to go because uh, we didn't want the Black Guardian to track down the doctor. So, okay. And I think this is probably my favorite pick. Ta-da! Hey! <laughs> this is Ad Gallifrey, obviously, because we're wearing our, uh, our... Your ribbons. Yeah. The, uh, what do we call them? Uh, Chase Masterson always wears them at the end of the clothes, um, the front and back and stuff. So... Uh, so this had to be in a couple of days into it because we've got quite a few there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there he is. I love the scarf, um, the vest. Um, I'm assuming his Sonic's in his pocket. Oh, you got the, eyes the going. Oh, yeah, you got the eyes going. I got, I got 10 different pockets in that coat. So Ten. I'm carrying a ton of stuff. I carry yo-yos and string and a magnifying glass and my Sonic. Jelly babies. Jelly babies. You name it, I got it in my pockets. How fun. So as far as conventions, is that your favorite or do you prefer Comic-Con or? Uh, Gallifrey One is really my, my favorite convention because it, it's much more community aspect driven. Personally. I get, you get, yeah, personally. You get to spend more time with your friends. You get to really meet new people one-on-one. -on -one. Comic-Con, uh, I'll be honest with you. I actually, before this year, um, I have skipped like the last one or two Comic-Cons um, because they've gotten so big it's just like it's just a sea of people and yeah i, I still enjoy people don't forget getting... the two-hour lines to get into hall h <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, i still like the the joy that i bring people when they see my my costumes and my cosplay but it, it becomes a very expensive uh, habit to do which, which is just so many people and not enough time to do things because you are waiting on all the lines right so um, and by that, expensive, it, you mean the hotel, the, the actual tickets aren't, aren't cheap anymore. Correct. Yeah. But even, even just the food, you know, between your, your lodging and your food and, you know, a lot of things that you do, it gets very pricey. You're spending a couple thousand dollars if you're, if you're staying at just a middle of the road hotel. And most likely you're not staying close to downtown. So you're taking a 40 minute bus ride in from like Mission Valley. Right. 
um, it, it's not that I don't really like Comic Con. It's just I feel like I getting better time spent at some of these smaller cons. It's, I get to be more interactive with the guests, the fans, my friends, and, and have more, a little bit more fun. And uh, you've heard uh, as of the pandemic year, they've moved 2021s 20, to 2022. Correct. Uh, I mean, that's the, happening with, with a lot of early well, cons. Star Trek is still happening in December this year. So, so far, I, I don't, I don't, I'll be honest with you. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I don't either. I, I, between, I between LA Comic Con, which is the same weekend as Star Trek Las Vegas in December, they've scheduled against each other right now. Really? I yep. thought they canceled. No, they're still in December. Oh. They, move, they they postponed from September to December, just like Star Trek Vegas postponed from August August to December. But they both they both postponed to the same weekend, which I think is which is crazy. And uh, but I don't think that um, especially in LA County for LA Comic Con that that's going to happen. And I think it would be unwise for Star Trek Vegas to happen in December. I think they'd be better off just pushing it to 2021, uh, back at its normal time. Because I think that even their fans and the and the attendees are a little still a little concerned about going. You'd be silly not to be concerned in in, a, in a, an environment, you know, especially California now with the whole um, you know the fires and all that. It's like we're just it's a war zone. 2020. Explain 2020 to me. I, I don't. I don't think. I, I don't think I can. I'm still waiting for the doctor to come and save us because this yeah, is ridiculous. I'm like, okay, fix it up, <laughs> fix it up. Um, is that uh, his, by the way? Is that fours? Which one is fours? Um, I think that might, let me see. Which one's you got there? Okay, so that's three on your on your right hand side. I think that's four in the, that you got to the left. Yeah. What else you got? No, that's well. Hello. I mean, I've got, I've got them all. Um, you got I, them all. You've got them all. I've got oh yeah, you do have them all. <laughs> and I even have the pen from uh, Tenants. Uh, um, remember that episode? I forget what the episode is. I think it was with the adipose. The uh, oh. The, uh, the lady was an alien. And anyway, I, we, we sidetracked. Okay, so we know you love doing the fourth doctor. So I'm going to rattle off a, a quick series of questions for you. Because uh, it's always fun to talk to fans and people who, especially, you know, you've, you've got a website, you're making all this product. So if you had to say right now, what would you say is your favorite current TV show? That's my fa The Mandalorian, hands down, is my favorite currently. Yay. I was hoping you'd say that. I know you were. <laughs> For those three people who don't know, that's with the baby Yoda. Anyway, um, it's just good writing. It's good. It's it's great cinematography and and, and just storytelling. It's yeah, awesome storytelling. storytelling. Yeah. Um, okay, so we know you like cosplaying the Fourth Doctor. Who is just in case it's not is your favorite Doctor in Doctor Who? The Fourth Doctor is my favorite Doctor. Okay. <laughs> Are you saying that because you cosplay? No, Tom Baker's always been my favorite. He was my first Doctor. Uh, he's oh. what made me fall in love with Doctor Who. Yep. Who was your first Doctor? Mine was this guy. It was five, yeah. But I, I mean, I, when people say, you know, do you dislike, I, I like the Doctor, period. Yeah. Each, each actor or actress who plays a Doctor brings their own part to the role. Right. And I love Doctor Who. I'm a big Doctor Who fan. Um, it is one of my favorite science fiction TV shows. Um, I got to admit, popularity-wise, though, number six seems to be not, not so much as popular. Well, you know, I mean, I... I he, came, I he came on screen yelling at Perry. <laughs> he, he was a very strong, huge bravado. And honestly, you know, there was some contention during his run as the Doctor between the, the showrunner and the writers and the actor. I don't, I don't think they, they did him justice. But if you listen to the big finish... Um, audio plays where Colin Baker is doing the sixth doctor. It's much more character driven and he's a much, much, you see the heart of that doctor. And I, and by the way, I love the fact that there's thousands of hours of big finish doctor who audio. literally, literally. You I just can, got the diary of river song too. So I'm, I haven't right. listened to him yet. Uh, so, but I mean, especially during some of those years where we didn't have doctor who like the wilderness years or this time where they're taking longer to produce Doctor Who episodes, that really fills the time. If you're if you're jonesing for Doctor Who, I would I would wholeheartedly endorse getting some big finish audios. My personal commentaries are a little pricey, so catch them when they're on sale or if you have coupons. Yeah. 
but they tend to be a little pricey to, for me. Yeah, well, I usually do the downloads. If you buy the physical uh, CD versions, they're more expensive. Right. But yeah, they do a lot of sales. And, and if you go there once a month, actually every week right now, they're, I think they're doing free downloads. Yeah, so you can get actually on their get mailing it. list and you'll, yeah. get the, you'll get the notices. So. Yeah, so you get, they're doing free downloads of a lot of episodes of their stuff right now and a lot of stories. So it's great. Great time. Uh. Whoa. Oh. Hello. Hello. Uh, Jane Cobb? That's who I am. Wow. How cool is that? And, and you must be on the Serenity because I recognize that bridge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm in Serenity Bridge just trying to, you know, call my mother. How, how did you pull me in like that? Well, what's going on? I don't know. On? I was playing with the keyboard here and uh, there you appear. With that, with that scary thing there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The controls only respond to, you know, violence and force, so. Okay. Um, wow. Um, wow. Can I, may I ask you a few questions? I mean, it's not often I get to interview a, a, a member of the uh, Serenity crew. Um, hey, I'm here, so you might as well make good use of my time. You know, it's funny, because I heard you didn't like to pick any kind of sides during the, uh, the war and all that, you know, the brown coats and whatnot, but but you seem to have aligned with the, the captain there. How come you never, you know, basically chose a side to be on? It's a pretty big conflict back then. Well, you know, there's there's no profit in being involved on a, in a war, you know. And I can put my life at risk with uh, not a lot of pay involved, so. Okay. Then, then why did you originally steal, uh, my understanding is from Captain Malcolm Reynolds, um, and then you joined his crew. Well, what was going on there? Well, you know, I was on a job and, uh, you know, I was on the other side of Mal and uh, he's like, I'll pay you double. And I'm like, all right, I'm on your side now. What were you trying to steal? What was that about? Oh, I don't know. It was some sort of heist. I don't pay attention to that sort of stuff. Wow. And so you guys hit it off right away? Did we hit it off? I don't know if we just could say I hit it off. Okay. <laughs> like, like I said. I go where the pay is, and for wow. now, for now the pay is here. Well, I mean, what do you bring? What do you kind of bring to the crew? I mean, because obviously you're obviously a kind of a lone ranger kind of character, is my impression. But what do you what do you offer to Captain Reynolds that makes you valuable? I offer, I offer my skills with my gun. <laughs> Your gun. I understand it has a name. Well, this is Boo. But I also have Vera, but she's not here right now. <laughs> Yes, Vera is the one we should all fear, right? Vera is definitely the one you should fear. You should worship Vera. <laughs> okay. Wow, that could be taken many ways. Um, so tell me, what's it like uh, with uh, Captain Reynolds? How, uh, how, do you, how do you guys get along? And the Serenity, Serenity itself, it's a pretty, uh, pretty fast ship. It's all right. You know, it, it holds together. It has its issues, you know. It breaks down every once in a while, but, you know, we got a good crew. Uh, it still flies. And uh, I get paid occasionally. And the captain, you're okay with his orders and mission? Uh, Mel's kind of got a an honor streak in him, but uh, you know he's huh? he's, a, he's you know he's one of the good guys, I guess. Uh, like I said, you know, he's my boss. And he pays you well. When he actually takes payment, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kind of so, hard to switch. Kind of hard to switch to a different job when you're stuck in space. Okay, and I've also heard you're kind of a little bit of a practical joker on the ship. Yeah, you know, that happens. You know, you get bored in space, and uh, it's certainly better than thinking about you know all the dangers and there are about being in space. So yeah, you know, I, I joke occasionally. You know. So what have you done? Yeah, you know, put some you know bad taste and stuff in the kitchen, you know, stuff like that. Okay, so nothing really major? Well, you know, Mal doesn't kind of put up with that kind of stuff too much, so. Okay, so tell me about a little bit about uh, working with uh, Wash. He's a wild card. <clears throat> the different uh, that, that Wash, yeah, he's a, he's a wild card, all right. He's a, he's a really good pilot, though, and whew, have you seen his wife, Zoe? Whoa! Uh, whoa, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's, she's quite the package. <laughs> and so you get along with Zoe as well? Yeah, we get along as long as, uh, you know, 
she feels like she can trust me. But, you know, like I said, it's all about the money. Wow. How about Inara and uh, Kaylee? Kaylee's the engineer. Uh, Kaylee is the engineer. Inara, well, you know, she's a companion. So uh, she, she brings a little bit of respect to the, you know, to the ship, which is always a good thing. And, uh, you know, I like to think about when she's out on those jobs. Yeah, I like to think about that. Wow. Um, and then we also have the uh, brother and sister team, the doctor and uh, his sister, yeah, yeah. who uh, has some sort of unique abilities and powers. Yeah, uh, Simon and River. Simon's kind of a you know, stuck-up city doctor. You know, I don't really find him. Uh, you know, he's he's a good doc, all right, but yeah, he's not my my, my not my cup of tea. But uh, River, yeah, she's weird. She's just weird. <laughs> weird. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She she is not normal. <laughs> I knew originally when they came on board, I, I understood they were kind of, there was a lot of trust issues, but eventually he became, uh, the doctor became a pretty big part of the team. And then a certain mission involved uh, his sister that went, to, now, shall we say, into unusual turns? Well, let's just say, you know, that brother and sister team bring quite a bit of trouble. And, uh, you know, we're always watching our backs because of the alliance, they're, you know, being chased by them. Um, but yeah, you know, they're, they're, they add to the crew, at least the doc does, you know, he patches me up when I get uh, injured, you know, but you know, he and I don't necessarily get along all the time. Does that happen often? Yeah. In really? Oh yeah. Okay. You or everybody? Yeah, just me, I think. Wow. And sometimes Mal, because you know, sometimes, you know, not all the information's there. So Mal gets a little upset because it's all, you know, being on this ship and being part of this crew, it's all about trust. For me, it's all about payment, but it's all about trust. So, you know, we're, you know, we're kind of a family. I get the impression you don't trust a lot of people. Uh, uh, trust my gun. Hello. Okie dokie. Um, I, I've got to ask this, and hopefully this isn't too personal, but I do remember someone uh, informing me about a particular planet that basically idolized you. I mean, to the point of a statue and, and uh, all kinds of things. But what was that about? And, and how, what did that do for you? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, that, that's a little bit of an odd situation where this, uh, you know, Jamestown. Yeah, that, that, that's not... That was a bit weird for me, you know. Uh, they they were kind of praising me like I was some sort of hero, and uh, you know what really happened was, uh, you know, I was trying to get away and I had to, you know, dump the loot, and so all this money fell on the townsfolk, and they thought I was, you know, stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. But you know, it's not exactly my way. So uh, you know, it was a little uncomfortable for me. You know, first I'm like, hey, all this praise, you know, they kind of giving me you know, perks of coming into town. Yeah, but then, uh, you know, it, it just gets on my nerves. Well, I also understand that uh, both Wash and Malcolm and some of the other crew kind of got a big kick out of it, shall we say? And, yeah, they, te they tease me quite a bit. You can, you can well imagine. But, uh, you know, I don't know why they stick their necks out for me. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I don't know why they, pra why they would really praise me because they, they just made me some sort of, you know, prop me up on a pedestal and that's I don't want that kind of attention okay so then obviously you're with this crew but where do your loyalties lie are you gonna stick with these people or one day they're gonna wake up and you're gonna be gone or well, you that's always that's always a possibility you know uh, you know I, I tend to stay with the, the, the places that pay the most and right now Mal is paying really wow okay so um, I, I guess uh, real quick, how I mean, looking at the bridge right there, I mean, is the ship like awesome to be in? I mean, it's a ship. I mean, <laughs> what can I tell you? I mean, if you look around this bridge here, you know, you see wires everywhere. I don't know enough stuff about that. You know, that's that's Kaylee's job to keep it working and and Wash's job to fly it. And, and I understand job to it. Mm, I, I understand Wash kind of gives her a lot of work to do. Because he's not quite. Wash tends to fly over. I've seen some video of some of his landings. So. Yeah, you know, hey, <laughs> any landing you survive is a good landing, right? Okay. Wow. Well, this is cool. Um, Jane, Jane Cobb, um, please send my greetings to the rest of the crew. Uh, they don't happen to be there, do they? 
no, no, they're all off in town getting supplies. And I'm just, you know, I was just making sure that uh, Vera was cleaned and, uh, and is working properly in my bunk after, you know, after, after calling my mother. What? On the bridge? Well, no, I just got up to the bridge to call my mother. Oh, okay. I guess I missed that. Wow, cool. So, um, well, I appreciate this time here, Jane. And uh, any closing words for your, uh, your fans outside of Janestown? <laughs> oh, my fans outside Janestown? Well, you know, just don't get on the... Don't get on the wrong side of a job. That's all I have to say. The wrong side of a job. Okay. Right. Be on my side because you don't want to face me. Okay. I was a little confused there, but cool. All right. Well, uh, I appreciate your time and um, this is awesome. I mean, next time you play around with equipment and pull me in, I'll, you know, let's, let's get the rest of the crew involved. How about that? All right. I can, we can try that. <laughs> okay. Do I need to do anything to get out of this? Because I'm yeah. Now let me see. Let me see if I can press some more buttons here. Get us out of here. Careful. Wow. Okay. So let's ask a couple other sci-fi uh, questions for you. So, who? Wh which is your favorite Star Trek series? My favorite Star Trek series. There's is, seven. There's a lot. There's seven. Well, I, I'll be honest with you. Um, I, I am not caught up on every single Star Trek series just yet. Like okay. I said, I, I am. I'm still have so much tv to watch especially now with streaming services my dvr um things that i have and um i am my wife sasha had not seen a lot of star trek so instead of me catching up i have started her from the beginning she started watching tos and she's slowly been making her way through all of the star trek universe so we can get up to date right now so i haven't really seen discovery or lower decks or short treks um, i have seen picard though i couldn't resist going and seeing star trek picard we did watch I loved that. It. I loved it. I thought I loved it too. My favorite Star Trek series, though, is still TOS. I, I that's what I grew up with. Um, you know, I, I'm a big Kirk fan. Uh, I love the the chemistry of that of that crew. I love. That was my movie. next question. Who's your favorite captain? So Kirk. Kirk. Kirk's my favorite captain. I mean, I awesome. do like a lot of captains, but Kirk is still my favorite. Um, I mean, obviously, there's been a lot of screen time of a lot of the captains, but I mean. When, we, when you get to the movies and, and, and the classic TOS cast, I mean, Wrath of Khan, I can't, I can't say enough about Wrath of Khan. So. For, for me, it's Voyage Home, then Wrath of Khan. Voyage Home brought the, the humor and the, and the real chemistry between the, the I, the, I the felt crew. like I was watching an original episode during, okay. during the Voyage Home. I, was... I go to four, but I'm, I'm totally with you. Four is my next, my next favorite of the movies for certain. That's cool. My favorite modern Trek that they've been produced has to be by far the Orville. So <laughs> <laughs> I do like the Orville though. So it, no, it feels... not, if you, if you saw my commentary reviews, I, I didn't care for discovery season one. I thought discovery season two was much better, but um, lower decks. I haven't done one on that, but Oh my God, it's, I don't know what they're doing, but they're doing it <laughs> wrong. Uh, except Picard. I do enjoy Picard. I really enjoyed Picard. Uh, I really enjoyed the Orville. Uh, like I said, I've only seen like the, the first episode of Discovery when it was on CBS. Um, I heard season one was really kind of tough to get through, but I did hear season two was much better. Um, and season three obviously comes out next month. So, Oh, it is next month? Yeah. I heard they're rushing. But so is The Mandalorian. Well, that that's we know it's going to be decent. Yeah. But uh, Discovery, they, I heard they had problems with editing and all this, that they, they no, were disappointed. I, I, I've been seeing a lot of ads and stuff that uh, Discovery's coming pretty soon. You know, you know they destroyed the sets. It's official. They, they destroyed them when they finished season three, and they don't think there's gonna, it's coming back. So, huh. so CBS, is, CBS is having problems right now. Um, okay, how about, uh, say, like, in terms of the sci-fi genre as a whole, do you have a favorite go-to? Uh, for example, I mean, are you into the Star Wars universe? Are you into the Harry Potter universe? Are you into the, or all of it? Yes. <laughs> yes, all of it. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I really love Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, uh, old school Battlestar Galactica. I really never got into the, the modern Battlestar Galactica, but I'm sure I'll binge that at some point. Okay. Um, Firefly, um, Harry Potter. Did I say Harry Potter? Harry Potter, definitely. Um, I, my daughter myself and Sasha just binged watch uh, The Last Airbender and Korra, Legend of Korra. My daughter loved it. My really? daughter is in love with the Avatar. 
which which is some great stuff. I mean, is that something you did on your own, or did she see it and want to? Watch no, no, it? that's something I did on my own because I was. Yeah. She, I've been trying desperately to get her to watch Star Wars, and her attention span for that has not been great. Okay, um, she's she's only three. Please don't, please don't say you started with Phantom Menace, please. No. No, I started with four. I started with a New Hope. You mean Star with... Wars? You mean Star yeah. Wars? Star Wars, yes. Yes. I started with a New Hope, um, but she hasn't been able to get through it, and I'm like, I keep. I really want her to start getting into that. Like, I really want to show her Doctor Who, but I, I just don't think that she has the attention span for it yet. Well, it might be a little scary for her, too, Doctor Who. Well, yeah, I would agree. It's probably a little scary for her. Even Avatar, and The Last Airbender, and Korra were scary at parts. But she gets through it like a trooper, though. Like, she'll go, oh, no, no, yay! <laughs> How funny. Um, yeah, because I don't know about you, but in Saturday morning cartoons were my thing. And oh, yeah, we had, I think we, so. Yeah, we had Shazam, we had ISIS, we had, you know, all kinds of... Super Justice Friends. League, Super Friends, yeah. Yep. So she doesn't have that now. It's all... No, she doesn't have that now. Um, she's, in, she's, you know, um, she's into some Disney stuff. Like, she, she, she loves all the Disney movies. Of course. As do, as do I. Um, she has some favorite character. Like, she loves Frozen. Who doesn't? Um, Is that her favorite princess? Does she have a favorite princess? Does she have a favorite princess? Um, I, I don't do. know. Her Actually, her favorite thing is actually... The Disney TV show Sophia the First. Oh, it's a it. Disney show. It's about a princess who basically um, uh, her mother marries the king, and so she comes and as a commoner becomes a princess uh, for in the royal kingdom. And there's like several seasons of it, and it's actually an incredible show. I mean, I actually loved it. So I would I would suggest you know if any adults interested in, in little Disney fun stuff. Um, I would say, you know, Sophia the First is on, it's on Disney is Plus. Is it made for her age group? Is that what it is? It is totally made for her age group. Okay, cool. Absolutely. And it's great that you're sitting there watching with, with her. Oh, absolutely. That, that's, I mean, you wouldn't believe a lot of parents just plop them from the TV and leave the room. And well, that's how I started watching Star Trek. My father was a huge Star Trek fan. He saw it when it aired in the late 60s. Uh, I was born in 1970. And, <laughs> and so uh, I was watching reruns, but my, fa my father, <laughs> I'm 50 years old this year. Yay! Happy 2020. Um, <laughs> uh, You'll never forget it. I'll never forget <laughs> it. Um, my father um, sat me down. Anytime Star Trek came on in, in reruns, he would sit me down and we'd watch it together. Um, and did you feel forced my... or did you like it? Huh? Did you feel forced or did you like it? No, I loved it. Okay. That's what got me into, into loving science fiction with Star Trek. I'm curious. On your shelf, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, you have a copy of uh, a DVD or Blu-ray of schoolhouse rock so when she I do have it I, how did you know <laughs> well i grew up with that and i'm like i learned the constitution and math and english and uh, oh I, I i i not only have the um dvd versions but i actually have the cd of all the songs so i have it to play ready for i'm her. a bill i'm a bill i'm a bill yeah. <laughs> ready for her because she's i don't think she's ready for it yet she's not ready for it yet but i have it i do have it um so you're, 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 you're happy to know that I, I do have that on my awesome. DVD Blu-ray shelf. I, I've, met, I've met parents, actual modern parents that say, I, what schoolhouse rock? And I'm like, eh. anyway, so <laughs> it's like, what planet did you come from? Um, uh, good question. Anyway, <clears throat> so um, let's, uh, in closing, what would you say to fellow fans and cosplayers? Um, how would you help them into, what, what do you suggest to them? You, you're thinking about doing cosplay, you go to conventions or ha Halloween's around the corner. You want to do cosplay? What, what do you recommend to them, as opposed to buying a store-bought costume? Uh, my recommendation is, is the, the key to cosplaying is just having fun and portraying the character that you have passion about. It doesn't really matter if it's actually screen accurate, as long as you are, are having a good time and you're putting on the costume that you're able to do on whatever level you can do, whether you sew yourself or you piece it together by going to a thrift store, or you get a customer to do it, um, it really doesn't matter. When people are at Gallery 1, they don't look at somebody else's doctor's costume and say, oh, well, this, this is really a bad job. They look and say, hey, you're the fourth doctor. You look great. And that's really, it should be about us sharing the passion about our characters. And I think that it's really that simple. Um, I might be... One of the people who was like, I've got to do a screen accurate, but that's me. That's who I am. 
Right. Everybody and, should do and, the best they can do. And stay within your budget. Don't you don't stay within to, your budget. Yeah, you don't have to go crazy. And like he said, if, if as long as you know the the essence is there and you're having fun creating it, and you look in the mirror and go, "Hey, I'm the fourth doctor. I'm the fifth doctor," even though you know you're a redhead and he's a blonde, whatever it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I've even worn a wig, so um, I'm not a fun, fan of wigs, but you know I've worn them. As you can tell, I wear a lot of wigs. <laughs> Yeah, but you, your your fourth doctor wig is is amazing. In fact, when I met you, and I, I kept looking, I'm like, "Is that you?" You're like, "No, that's not me." <laughs> um, yeah, as you can see, I don't have a ton of hair up here, so. <laughs> uh, I got you beat there. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm a little bit older, but anyway, um, cool. So yeah, I, I like I said, I, both of us would encourage anybody who wants to do this. Halloween is a perfect time. But also, if you want to do conventions and things, a um, couple pieces of advice though: make sure your costume has pockets. Lots of clothes. pockets. Lots. Of, you know, well, yours has eight, but I don't know if you need eight. But you do need pockets. And the reason being is you want you don't realize, you know, your ID, your money, your you buy little things. You know, you, you start collecting props. Um, you need places for all that to go. Um, but the photo opportunities are fun. I think watching you take pictures with people is is hysterical especially the little ones oh I, I love that anybody anytime that anybody asks me for a picture i'm happy to give it i mean the one thing i would suggest if you're if you're wanting to take a picture with a cosplayer make sure you don't ask them when they're sitting down to eat or yes. if they're rushing off somewhere they usually have some place to be and it's not that they don't want to take a photo with you it's just because they either have to go to the bathroom they're late for a panel um or a photo shoot or they're um, eating or they're eating yeah or they need to go eat um, and that's, that's one of the other things you really should do as a cosplayer is make sure you take care of yourself. Right. People are there to en enjoy and see what you, what you're, what you're doing. But if you don't take care of yourself, you could get dehydrated and, 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 and have health issues. Yeah. So make sure you eat, make sure you drink water, uh, and make sure you're looking out for yourself. Absolutely. And I would say as a cosplayer, I've learned uh, to be, you know, in terms of you can't do something for somebody or take a picture with them, be, just be nice about it. Just say, hey, I'm on my way or I've got to finish this. Catch me when I'm out or, you know, I'll be here. Just, you know, just be nice about it. I've met some nasty cosplayers. So. Yeah, there, I mean, there's, there, there's some that, uh, and, I, and I have no names and I'm not going to name people, not that I have anyone to name. But yeah, just uh, <laughs> just be kind about it. Be honest. Say, hey, I really have to go use the bathroom. Catch me when I'm done. Or do you mind I'm eating right now? Um, so I'm not taking pictures until I'm done eating. Or I'm late for, like I said, a panel. And uh, you can try. You can come see the panel and catch me afterwards. Right. And nine to nine out of ten people will apologize and say, oh no problem. You know, they have no idea what's going on with you. So they just assume you know you're you know available for a picture and you may not be. So. Just a little, you know, little friendly thing. Just be friendly, be nice. Be, yeah, be friendly. Okay, what's going on? Uh, Doctor Strange? Is that That's you? Right. That's right. It's Doctor Strange. Yeah, from the New York Sanctum. You're in New York? Oh, yes. And, and how, how did you get to be in New York, by the way? Oh, well, that's where one of the uh, sanctums is located that uh, helps protect the planet. Okay. Oh, can I ask you a few questions? I, I've always wanted to know. Sure, of course. Okay. I, I understand prior to your persona that the world knows now, you were an, uh, like a super duper surgeon and, and you had an accident. And, and how, how do you, uh, rumor has it that you had a, um, shall we say, if this is okay, a, a difficult uh, um, persona, personality? I mean, has that has this new mission in your life changed your attitude toward others? Oh, I, I would say that is exactly true. I was a the 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 top neurosurgeon in the world, uh, and then I had a very serious car accident, which unfortunately mangled these hands. Um, and uh, I, at that time, would do anything to find a way to um, regain the use of them. So I could return the prestige that I once had. And of course, the wealth. The wealth was very important. The wealth. Okay. Yes, I was super rich. And you still are, if I may ask? Well, I'm rich in other ways now. Let's say I, I've, in my search to heal myself, um, I went broke. Uh, I traveled the world looking for any 
anything that would help heal these these broken hands and uh and what, i spent all my money in an attempt to do so it's funny you say that what motivated you to, to literally go beyond say new york and literally i believe you went to the, the east right the far east in the end i ended up in the himalayas oh okay what happened there well um i traveled all over the world uh, looking for any type of therapy or treatment that would restore my hands to their once glory days. Uh, and I failed miserably. So after losing all my money in this search, um, I had heard a rumor from these, um, these people in the area that there was an ancient healer um, who could possibly restore my hands. Wow. So, so uh, rumor has it or, or history has let us know the general public that you uh, uh, basically encountered what was called the ancient one, some yes. sorcerer supreme. Yes. How did you the, find him? The, uh, I tracked him down um, to his his abode, his, the monastery that he was um, teaching and, and practicing at, uh, and I begged him to restore my hands. I, I actually told him it was it was imperative and that the world needed me to be the neurosurgeon that uh, that I was. Uh, he looked at me and he said, I offer you an apprenticeship. And I told him to kind of go do something with himself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Probably not a good in, you know, way to introduce yourself, I would imagine. No, no, but... Um, but you became a student, right? I eventually became a student when I, when I learned there was a plot against his life and realized that... Um, uh, I was, I was literally, I found out about this plot against his life and um, I tried to warn him, but his, uh, this person who was trying to basically kill him, um, basically entrapped me in magic. And I couldn't, I couldn't warn him, but the ancient one came and found me and realized that I was willing to um, give of myself, which is not something I normally would have done in the past. Uh, and he, uh, he agreed at that point to take me on as apprentice and teach me the magical ways. Okay, so this is when you first got introduced to the world of magic. And, yes. And, and I believe also martial arts. So how, yes. did, how did that training go? Well, you have, to, you have to keep in mind that training for the martial arts and training for the mystical arts are very similar. It takes really good discipline, um, focus, uh, and inner peace to master them. So they, they go hand in hand. And some of the movements that are necessary to cast some of these magical spells um, are bound and based in the, uh, in the uh, martial arts. Wow. So which did you find easier to learn? The magic, martial arts, or together? Or how did... Well, it took me quite a bit of time to, to learn both, keeping in mind that uh, I had to really find some inner peace and realize that it's mind over matter because these hands, you know, I can never do surgery again, but that's being able to, being able to focus and then craft the magic and movements of martial arts. That has, that was, that was tough um, to, to get my mind over realizing that my hands need to do something different to create this very powerful, very impactful, um, movements now now that that's a certain that medically you'll never be able to do the kinds of surgery you used to do nope i shall never pick up a scalpel again that must be uh well i guess with your new profession you've got a m lot more responsibility and, and i also understand you acquired an assortment of uh like mystical objects i think there's something called the eye of i hope i say it right agamato agamato i'm wearing the eye right now and, and the cloak of levitation, which you are also wearing. Tell I'm also wearing that right now. Tell me, tell me about them. How do they work? What do they do? Well, the cloak allows me to levitate and fly. It's very useful. It's very durable. Um, not in, not in, you know indestructible, but it's pretty durable, especially when you're battling you know dark magics and, and evil creatures from other dimensions. Um, uh, the eye of Agamotto. Um, it's, a, it's a powerful mystical light um, that allows me to see through all disguises and illusions uh, and basically track both ethereal and corporeal beings uh, through their psychic and uh, magical emissions. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure that was a lot of gobbledygook for you, but 
it's it's like super it. helpful in, in, in battling evil. We'll 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 go with that. I gotta say the news footage of of, of you and your cape. I, I swear your cape has a, its own personality. It it's it's literally whisked you. It's it saved you several times. Let's let's say it does have a personality of its own. It does. Do, do you does. do do you do you guys? Is it a bonding kind of thing or is it like we, we have a good rapport? We we have a good rapport. Okay. Um, wow. I bet every, everyone would love one of those. <laughs> okay. You also have a, a, a friend of yours kind of helped you through this process a little bit, especially toward the end. And I guess he's not only your friend, but he's also your valet. Uh, I believe his name is Mr. Wong. Yes. How do you guys work together? He's not magical or is he magical as well? Oh, no, he's magical. He's definitely magical. He, he pretty much has um, spent his whole life training under the ancient one um, to serve the Sorcerer Supreme. Um, so he's he's quite magical. He's quite adept. Um, I don't consider him a valet as much anymore as I consider him a partner. Okay, that's a good thing. Yes, it's a great thing. Well, I, it's good to consider other people your equals versus um, kind of being the cream of the crop, as you might say. You mean your original personality? Yes, my original personality. <laughs> Okay, so tell me about this. Um, I read a little bit about the orb of Agamento. What's what's this orb versus the eye kind of? How does that all work? Well, the, the the eye helps me battle evil. The orb helps me fight, um, find not necessarily fight, but find where magic's being used. And if it's being misused, it helps me locate where that is so that I can help make balance and protect the earth. And this so it's kind of like a homing beacon. It's kind of like a seeing eye. Okay. So you can, so I can scry what's going on, sort of like clairvoyance. I know I'm talking big words again, <laughs> but uh, it, it basically gives me insight. And they're I mean, both good things. They work for. They're good. both very good things. Good, good magic. Let's call it. Yes. For us, us laymen. Yes. Um, and the fact that you are trained in, in basically several uh, martial arts uh, disciplines, including judo, um, you have shown proficiency not only in magic but with swords and weaponry and axes. Where did you learn all those skills? I mean, each one requires its own kind of discipline, so to speak. Well, it, 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 it took quite a number of years uh, training under the ancient one and the, and the other um, study practitioners of the mystical arts in the Himalayas to learn, again, make sure that my hands could actually hold these things. But luckily in a magical energy sorts of sense, it's not the same thing as fine, delicate work, but um, yes, it, it took quite a number of years to, to master a lot of those um, martial trainings. So the skill of the, the weaponry, the swords and axes, are they assisted by magic? Or is it you know the art first and you're just doing, anyone can be trained to do what you're doing. Anyone can be trained to be used normal martial arts weapons. But in my case, the mystical and the martial uh, are kind of unified. So for me... I need the mystical energies to be able to wield these types of weapons. Wow. I'm just blown away by this. Um, I, I got it. Okay, now, this one you're probably going to love. You've been described as the mightiest magician in the cosmos, uh, more powerful than, than any of your fellow humanoids, because uh, uh, unlike some of the other, uh, uh, shall we call them Avengers, um, they are endowed with special abilities or had them to begin with or superpowers. What, what do you think of that compared to all the other superheroes who being called the mightiest uh, magician of the cosmos, more powerful? Well, you know, we defend the earth on very different levels. Uh, they can use brute strength and agility to help um, defend the earth, where I'm defending the earth against um, dark magics, um, creatures from um, dark dimensions, uh, just evil beyond the scope of your normal day. So while you may consider me the most powerful magician, I might not be the most powerful physically, but certainly um, our avenues of where we, our focus is to help defend the earth are quite different. So I don't necessarily consider myself all powerful, but I'm certainly powerful in the mystic arts, whereas the Avengers uh, are powerful in other ways. Okay, now that you said that, is there that much dark magic out there you know magical bad guys so to speak well maybe not necessarily on this plane of existence but there are 
multiple dimensions in the multiverse. So you're all over the place, literally? I am basically keeping those who wish to um, either destroy or seek power in, in our dimension here on Earth um, from basically coming over and doing so. So sometimes I'll battle on their plane of existence and sometimes we'll battle here. Okay, so I'm just curious, how does one, you know, say a mystical thing appears right next to me, how does, how does one get a hold of you or are you alerted to that something? Well, I use the, uh, the orb of Agamotto to detect that. And so I, I, I will be there forthwith if, uh, if uh, a, a dark magic or an evil creature from another dimension appears here on Earth. Wow. That's my job, Sorcerer, Sorcerer Supreme, defender of the, of the Earth from, of all mystical. Well, that's what we call it anyway. I uh, <laughs> appreciate all your efforts. I mean, it's nice to see uh, the whole uh, effort being done. I mean, obviously you put yourself in danger and you try to keep others out of danger and, and uh, you, you do have a cohort of other uh, extra talented people that have abilities that normal people like me don't. Um, to help protect the planet and according to you other dimensions now so this is this is new much bigger yeah. than i thought it was mind-blowing i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> like, okay i'm gonna rest on that one for a while um thank you so much for um popping in <laughs> uh, um but i really appreciate the time and, and people got more insight to who you are because uh, you did have that reputation before so being approachable was not something i expected so. Oh well, it, I'm a changed man, let me tell you. But uh, uh, those days are far; those days are far behind me. Uh, and uh, and now my my sole purpose is 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 Sorcerer Supreme, Defender of the Earth. Right, and you've always been noted as super intelligent and a genius at, at everything you do. And then uh, now you've got the wisdom, so it's like, oh, hell, you know, wow, awesome. <laughs> well, I I appreciate you having me here, and uh, do stay safe. Especially in these times, right? Especially. Okay. So, so are we going to get popped out of here? Sure. Hold on. Um, but anyway, um, any closing comments for this? This has been great. I mean, uh, Andrew, you're amazing. Um, your website's amazing. Your cosplay's amazing. But any closing messages? Uh, I, I really appreciate it, Lorenzo, and, and, and I'm, just, I'm happy to be a, to be on your show, which is a first for me. I haven't really been on a lot of uh, shows for YouTube channels or I've been on a couple of podcasts, so this is exciting for me to be able to talk about myself as me, because most of the time everybody sees me in cosplay and they don't actually see who I am. Um, right. But it's it's nice to get to talk. I to hadn't, you. When I met you out of cosplay, I had no idea who you were. You're like, yeah, I know. I walked up to you and said, "Hey, Lorenzo," and you're like, "Who the heck are you?" <laughs> Seriously, I, I don't think I ever see when I until I saw you the first time. I don't think I had any clue what you really well, look like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, and 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 a lot of people say that because they're like, "Oh my God, you take on the persona of the of the cosplayer, the cosplays that you do." I don't really recognize you outside of of costume. I mean, when I'm at Gallifrey, I come into Gallifrey with a beard like this. By the end of the weekend, I'm looking like the Fourth Doctor. So I'm changing my face all the time um, when. It, so what are, you, what are you coming in as? What do you, who do you do when you're that way? Well, this last year I did my Sarah John uh, Smith with this beard because this isn't really a Doctor Who beard. Right now I'm, I'm like, oh, I think I'm doing Sir Hargreaves from my Umbrella Academy right now. Wow. There might be a cosplay in the future. <laughs> there you go. But you're, you're one of those two, like, I'm not one of those people. You can, uh, like, you shave it, and then, you know, three seconds later, you got a beard. <laughs> it takes me, you know, a decade just to get, you know, three hairs here. But well, this is my this is my pandemic beard. I've been growing it since uh, March. So. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's why my uh, I got a little handlebar mustache and a little pointy beard down here. But you're keeping your hair pretty short. Yeah, I am keeping my hair pretty short, though. Okay. Otherwise, it would be. Yeah, otherwise, it would be down there. John Lennon. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but anyway, no, I'm, okay. I... I I've, I've really enjoyed uh, being here with you and, uh, you, and I'm hoping that we all get to see each other in person real soon. Absolutely. Not before the, the vaccine, though. I'm, Not before the vaccine. I'm going to, thanks to Zoom and video and all this recording technology, um, you know, I've been able to keep in touch and talk to people and share these kinds of experiences because a lot of people, you know, are questioning what is a cosplay? What's this Doctor Who stuff? What's, you know, and, and these shows that I've been doing and talking to people, um, including let's give a shout out to Riversong. Hi, Riversong. 
<laughs> Hi, River. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. There you go. Um, your husband out of costume, but anyway. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's been a great chance to uh, opportunity to talk to people and, and keep in touch and and just share. I mean, guys, you got to go to his website. I mean, I am after we're done. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get one of those baby Yodas because oh. you know I can't stand the kid. It's just whoops, backwards. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> So um, I appreciate it very much. Thank you so much for uh, doing the show. And um, um, there's more surprises uh, uh, coming. And uh, for those of you who haven't yet, uh, I don't know where it is. Somewhere there's a button here that says subscribe. There's a little bell, too, that will give you a notice when I drop the videos and, and shows, uh, as well as the other shows that I have. Um, I have a collectible show. I have a commentary show. I have a, uh, a talk about show, which has just started. Um, where we talk, talk about subjects like Space 1999, Cobra Kai, and we have a group of people discussing the various uh, projects. So tune in. Um, Mr. Mr. Andrew Elkins, thank you so much again. Um, this was so much fun, and uh, we'll, we'll talk again, I'm sure. I hope so. Thank you, Lorenzo. Okay. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.